Hello ADSB Exchange fans. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble the ADSB Exchange DIY kit or the do-it-yourself kit. This low-cost kit gives you an opportunity to purchase all the items that you need to build an ADSB Exchange uh, feeder in one uh, easy box uh, for pretty much as low a cost as possible um, to get into the hobby unless you have some of these pieces available in a drawer, I guess, uh, and then they're free. But otherwise, um, let's go over the kit contents for starting with a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, Model B single board computer with 2 gigabits of RAM. Custom ADSB Exchange Raspberry Pi 4 case. Uh, same case is available on our website individual if you have all the pieces, but we include it in the kit because it makes a great uh, heat sink. As you can see, the case itself comes down. It has these uh, little protrusions, which we're going to put over the chips on the Raspberry Pi, and that will. Uh, pretty much cool it as much as we can. This may, gives you a great opportunity if you want to put this in an attic or some other uh, non-air-conditioned uh, area. This will give a great up chance for the heat to dissipate and to keep the feeder running. Also included is uh, the ADSB Exchange uh, SDR or Software to Find Radio. Um, it's a lot like many SDRs that are available, uh, but what makes ours a little different and special is that it has a LNA or a low noise amplifier built into the SDR. It has a 1090 megahertz filter built into the SDR, which blocks out other signals um, from nearby radio towers, cell phones, things like that, and make sure that the signals you want get through without everything else being blocked. Um, and it also includes a TCXO. Um, if you're not familiar with what a TCXO is, it is a small crystal that is built in that oscillates at a certain frequency. And that allows it to, the SDR to make sure that it is going to stay on frequency uh, and it won't drift as it heats and cools as many uh, less expensive, low, low, low cost SDRs do. So uh, we've packaged all those pieces into a single um, unit with an aluminum case, again, for heat dissipation. Um, and pretty much this is as low a cost as you're going to get all that. If you try and buy it, um, the filter and the amplifier separate, uh, you're going to pay twice as much. And the TCXO is actually not something that can be purchased separately. It has to be built into the SDR. Uh, we've also included, included a low cost 1090 uh, megahertz antenna. This antenna um, attaches to the SDR and just lets you uh, receive signals. It works good if you're going to, say, put this on top of a desk by a window or a dresser. Um, obviously, uh, antennas are a large part of your system. Um, and as you grow in the hobby, you may want to look at getting our ADSB Exchange uh, dual band outdoor antenna that does both 1090 and 978 megahertz and allows you to mount it outside. It has six dB or six um, decibels of gain, uh, which pretty much is uh, familiar with decibels. Each three decibels is a doubling of signal. So six decibel is two times two or four times as much signal as you would get, say, with this small antenna or any single non-gain antenna. Includes a power supply. This is a universal power supply that does both 120 and 240 hertz uh, electric. And that way, if you are uh, ordering this from Canada or Mexico, which it is currently available in, or we hope to have it available in Europe as soon as possible, um, you can go ahead and use one of the included adapters that will go ahead and allow you to use this overseas. Um, it just obviously you match up the plug it looks like the one on your wall you plug it in and it's uh, going to automatically work for you and then finally we have this this is an SD card um, that includes the ADSB exchange image already burnt into it so it's ready to go you don't have to worry about downloading the image software or anything like that 
and it is a uh, industrial grade card. Uh, we use industrial grade cards so that these will run as long as possible. The idea being that you can, um, uh, you don't want to have to replace that if you're familiar with the Raspberry Pis. The SD cards do tend to uh, burn out. They don't last as long as, say, a dedicated hard drive, but by using industrial cards and along with um, some tweaks that we have done to the ADSB Exchange image that minimizes the number of writes to the SD card. Uh, this industrial card will last you for as long as your feeder and the Raspberry Pi is running pretty much. So um, I know people have had these running for years. Um, not saying they can't fail, but you're definitely going to get a while out of them, including if you're using it in harsh conditions like an attic or something like that. All righty. Next, I'm going to show you the tools that you need to assemble the kit. Uh, pretty much the first and primary tool you're going to use is a Phillips number one screwdriver. Uh, you can actually assemble the whole kit with a Phillips screwdriver, um, but if you have one, a tweezers makes it very easy to go ahead and maneuver the um, heat sink pads that you're going to place on the Raspberry Pi. Um, if you don't have a tweezers, you can use a hobby knife, a wooden craft stick, toothpick or something, um, or you can even use the screwdriver itself. But if you do have a tweezers, it probably makes it easier. Uh, it's probably the easiest thing you can use to go ahead and um, maneuver the heat pads because you don't want to get the oils from your fingers on them too much. Um, but again, it's very simple. So now it's time to assemble the Pi into the case. As I said, I have my number one Phillips screwdriver. Uh, again, I like a tweezers, it's easiest. The Raspberry Pi case, the SD card, and of course our Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and open that up like a little clamshell. Uh, if you do it that way, it's easiest to line back up. I've already opened the box for our Raspberry Pi, which you want to go ahead and do. So we'll pull our Pi out, slide it in there, try not to touch it too much, especially the chips where we're going to put our heat sinks. So let's go ahead and dump our accessory bag here and start working with our heat sinks. So what we do here, move this down, the lower it is, the easier. And these heat sinks have a plastic piece on both sides so that you don't um, mess with them as you touch them and get any oils on them. And of course, we need to get those removed. So the trick I found when you get them removed is if you just put your finger on there and kind of bend it, you can get one off relatively easily. Let's put our box back there. It makes a nice little garbage can. Um, now for the second part. You want to kind of roll it off and just get it on the pie. See how I just let it drop? And you go ahead and show you again because best part is you can do a couple of these to start. Uh, if you can do the, I do the three smaller ones, roll it off that way, roll it off this way, and just let it drop. And we're gonna do our little square one too. Okay. Roll it. Roll it again, let it drop. Okay, so now this is where the tweezers come in handy. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this up with the tweezers. This one goes over this chip. You can kind of see from their sizes where they're going to go. Sometimes they want to stick to the um, tweezers like this one is. It's a great opportunity to just do that. Touch it down. This one... The next two don't quite line up size-wise with the chip, but you can see where we're going to put them over that chip there. And again, if you need to. Finally, this one goes over this bundle of chips right here. It's mainly going to go ahead and cover this chip, but it does get the other four. Uh, I think there are resistors in there. So 
now. Let's go ahead again. Roll it. As they get a little bigger, they get a little trickier. If you can't get it off of one corner, try a different corner. Again, once you got it, just let it drop. Uh, you don't want the oils from your fingers getting on it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. This goes on the memory chip right here. Gonna center it the best you can. These little notches are pretty centered. And finally, our fourth one for the CPU itself. If you want to get fancy, you could uh, take a, um, a Q-tip or something and clean this up with rubbing alcohol or whatever. But it's really not necessarily. Um, they're pretty clean. Uh, we've done tests. It's not a problem. And this one here, see, I kind of, it's very easy to rip the heat. So if you're going to do it that way, you need to be very, very gentle. If you can't get it, it's easy sometimes just to pick, let it go, pick it up an uh, easier way, and then put it down. And that is all four of them. Then we're going to take our case again. If you open it this way, just clamp it, shell it back up. You can see the big opening is going to go over all the external plugs. And then just hold it with your fingers, flip it upside down. Take your screw, set it in, set it in. If you're like me, you got magnetic screwdriver, it makes it much easier. Do a little crisscross pattern. And when you tighten them, the trick is you don't want to over tighten them. This isn't wrenching down on it, see how strong you are. I use two fingers, as you can see here, like this. And I just twist it with the two fingers until it becomes snug. Um, the case is aluminum. Uh, the screws are steel, so the screws will strip the case out if you force it. Uh, but you don't have to. Just nice and snug. I do it in an X pattern, if you noticed. One, two, three. And I'm going to do this one last. Snug. And then I just go around once because... You'll see the first one or two you did sometimes will loosen up a little bit as it comes down. I got all four nice and snug. Nothing is moving, which is exactly what I want. So now, again, this is where your tweezers help. But if you don't have them, you don't have to. We're going to pull off the little pads and place them in each of the four holes. This pads just uh, raise it up a little bit. It stops it from sliding around the table um, or whatever you've placed it on, your dresser. Uh, dressers are a great place to put this, especially by a window. Um, the higher the better, even if it's um, on a dresser versus on top of a desk, you're gonna get a better signal because the higher your antenna is, the less interference, uh, things that are getting in its way in the around your house, so. Go ahead and put one, two, three, four. I'm just kind of push them down. All right, so I've got it in. You can see the ports are all lined up. It's nice and simple. It slides in there pretty good. Final thing you want to do is take the SD card and put it in. Now, SD card is when you're, it's going to face up looking down. Now, I will tell you it is possible to drop this inside of there. Um, if you do drop it inside of there, and it just goes in, you can shake it and it'll come out. Um, but otherwise, just get, make sure it's in there. You'll see uh, it'll, if you're in the wrong spot, it'll almost pull itself in. So I then push it in, make sure it's down, um, in all the way. You can use a little flat tool just to push it, make sure if you want to. And that's it. And then the Raspberry Pi is all set in its case and ready to go. All right, for our next step, we're going to add the SDR and the antenna to the Pi that we assembled already. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put it in this bottom centered USB port, but you can actually use any of the ports you want. Um, 
I just prefer these are USB 3 slots. Might as well uh, have the extra capacity, even though technically this is only a USB 2 uh, device, but you know you're going to have the bandwidth capable for it. So, step is easy. Uh, take your SDR. This is a little rubber protective plug. Take that off. Can be a little slippery, but there you go. Go ahead and take your antenna and put it on, just slowly twisting, just like the bottom screws. Two fingers, snug tight is all we want. Um, and then the nice part about this is you can go ahead and twist it to get it up the way you want. Just notice that spins. Um, I don't bother tightening here, I just tighten it from here. Um, that gives you what you want and then gives you some ability to spin. You want the antenna to bend up with the ADSB exchange because you'll see when you put it into the Pi, there you go. That is your completed physical feeder with one exception. Obviously, you're going to take your power supply, uh, wire it up, hook it up, and you know, it goes to your source. And then right here, you have a USB-C connector. That is where your power supply is going to go. And that is it. Now, once it's booting, all we have to do is connect to it, to the software. Uh, you can go to adhbexchange.local. Um, the instruction should be, uh, the address should be on the written instructions. If you know the IP of the device itself, you can go on that um, directly. You're going to get a, bring up a web interface that is going to give you all the steps. And then uh, we have a separate video on that that you can view. Alrighty.